to start off, let's disconnect the negative battery terminal. It's located right underneath this cap. Lift it up, set it aside. The negative terminal is actually the one all the way back there. So get your 10 millimeter socket and break the nut free that's on the top. I'll show you a better view in a second. Loosen it up and then pull the negative terminal right up and off. There it is. That's the nut that you have to remove. I like to set it aside over here. That way it can't make contact with anything. All right, so underneath the car, typically you'd have a splash shield here. Mine's missing, but basically you have seven millimeter bolts and potentially push clips holding it on. Take that off and then we'll have access to the starter, which is gonna be hard to see, but it is right above this oil filter housing. That's the starter right there. And then the two connectors that we have to undo. And then the connection that we have to undo is this small 10 millimeter nut here and then up top a 13 millimeter nut. So let's start with the 10 millimeter. Get your tool in there. Take that off. Let's get a 13 millimeter socket up there. Break that nut free. Take it off. Now you can pull off the connector, set that aside. And now looking from underneath, you can see this 13 millimeter nut right here. This is one of the two nuts that is holding the starter onto the block. There's one that is right above, which I can't even see, so I won't be able to show you. But basically, I'm gonna take this one off. Again, 13 millimeter. Looks like once you break it free, you should be able to take it off by hand. Actually, it's a bolt with a stud sticking out of it. Let's do the same to the top. Sneak your ratchet up in here. If you just feel along right here, that's where it is. You'll feel that little small stud sticking out. Break that free. Let's take that one out as well. Okay, here's this bolt. Same thing. Now we can grab the starter. Wiggle it and break it free. There we go. It's sitting on a little dowel pin here, probably one at the top as well. And now you just have to kind of fish it out. Make sure all wiring and other connectors are out of the way. There it is. There's your old starter. Take your new starter, slide it up into position. Line it up with the two dowel pins. I'm gonna get this bottom bolt started first, that way the starter doesn't wanna fall on me. Now that that one's started, make sure the top one is lined up, which it is. Let's get the top one in. This one you'll kinda have to feel for it because you can't really see anything. Let's snug them both up. Now it's snug, let's do the top one. All right, that top one is snug. I'm gonna make it nice and tight with my wrench. <clears throat> and do the same to the bottom one. Perfect. Make sure your electrical connections are clean, which mine are. Take off the nuts that you need in order to connect things. There's a lock washer on this one. Take that off because that goes between the nut and the connector. Let's take off this lower uh, 10 millimeter nut. This one also has a lock washer. Take that off as well. Take your wires, slide them over their corresponding studs. Put on the corresponding lock washers. That's gonna help keep those nuts in place. Start on the nuts. Okay, let's snug these two up. Now you don't have to go crazy on these. They are very delicate and they can actually break off internally inside the starter. So once it bottoms out, give it a little snug and just stop right there. Bottom that one out as well. And let's give it a snug. That's bottomed out. Give it a little extra. All right, that's it. There was nothing covering this. At this point, if you had your splash shield, go ahead and reinstall that. Let's reconnect the battery now that we're done with the job. Tighten up this 10 millimeter nut. I know I have my positive terminal off, but that's for a different reason. So 
assuming that yours is on, of course. Put the cap on. 